Hey, this is Rob, and this is another video in this series for Fusion 360 beginners or anyone trying to get better at using Fusion 360. The route to getting there, I think, to getting really good with it is, even though we're thinking about 3D modeling, is to get good at 2D sketching. And so that's what these videos are for. We basically take a technical drawing and try and materialize it or realize it in Fusion 360. Um, and that requires some skill with uh, sketch constraints and sketch dimensions and um, basically getting, getting all the details of the drawing to happen in, in Fusion. So here's, uh, this time it's the finger guide and I'm gonna start this off the same way I start them all off, which is by making a new component and I'll call it finger guide. And then I'm gonna make a sketch. Now I've been making the sketch on kind of like the leftmost uh, part of the the drawing for the for most of them but I think the thing to do is look at the technical drawing and try and figure out which view would give you the most information so if you were to look at it from the left side here or what I've been calling the front it probably will just look like an L so that's not really that useful I think the top in this case gives more information so that's where I'm going to start the drawing in this case you know I've, I've been just drawing them as a bunch of lines and most of them being kind of wacky and then going back and straightening them out with constraints and dimensions. But I think in this case, it does, it has kind of a rectangular uh, base to it or um, outer edge. So it, it just makes sense, I think, to just make the rectangle and then cut away from it in this case. So I think the first thing though is to change the units because this looks to be in inches. So let's try that again. I will make a rectangle and it's going to be 4.12 by 2.3 and <clears throat> I think you know this doesn't specifically show me in the drawing that it's symmetrical um, but it sure looks like it the the dimensions look symmetrical I would say you know there's I don't know it's a little weird for me to to have like 0.46 and 0.46 in the lower right there you know it feels like there's a better way to draw this it looks like it's a little redundant maybe if we just said hey this is symmetrical and uh, we're going to focus on dimensions on one half of it that would make sense in which case it would make the most sense to draw half of this in a sketch and then extrude it and mirror it as a 3d body and that's always the case i think it, you know a best practice is to uh, do the as little information as you need to in the sketch and then do the rest outside of the sketching this 2d environment so um you know, in this case, I want to show you some of the uh, s symmetry and mirroring that can happen in a sketch. So I'm going to um, just do it all inside the sketch. I'm not going to try and draw half of it and then mirror it like I did in another video. So um, in this case, you know, another thing I learned by doing these videos is that it really makes a lot more sense to just make a line and then go back and hit X after you've highlighted it to turn it into a construction line. Hitting X or clicking the glyph here, if the construction glyph before you draw lines, just is a headache because when you start using the next tool, midway through it, you realize, oh, this is going to be in a, a construction line when it's not supposed to be. And all of a sudden you have to cancel out of that and start over. So I think my new practice is just to draw the lines and then change them into construction lines. So that's what I've done here. And now I'm just going to draw the rest of the features of this thing. I have to zoom in, I think, because this UI gets in my way otherwise. So I'm going to draw just a line here and a line here and then this other kind of angle over there. And those are the those are the things that are going to be mirrored to the other side. So one thing I could do just so you can see how it works is I could draw over here kind of a version of it, but not quite right. And um, what I could do is say just use a, a symmetry symmetry constraint. So symmetry says uh, if I hover, it says select the objects. So that one and that one should be symmetrical over this symmetry line. And if I click this, there you go. And then do the same with these two and that one. And so, you know, that works. And it makes a lot of these symmetry glyphs for all of the constraints. It's a little bit obnoxious, <laughs> but uh, that's how it goes. And so if I want to do the same here, uh, I could do that. I could draw another line and make them symmetrical with constraints, or I can go to the create menu and hit mirror and then choose the sketch curve and the sketch line here, mirror line and hit okay. And that does it too. It doesn't create any more glyphs it creates the same amount so it really doesn't matter which way you do it and you know it's not like uh, I could have done all of them at once but it's not like that 
would look any different here. It doesn't add anything to the timeline. So it really doesn't matter how you do it. And uh, that's just that's just the way it looks. So all those uh, constraints are there, um, but that's how, that's how it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna make that other line that's here. And the last feature really is the, um, the uh, slot there. So I, you know, I could draw that. I could just click and then hold down the button to, well, let me do it that way. I, I like I like using the slot feature, but you know, I would click, start drawing, hold down the button to make this uh, curve here, and then I could go the rest of the way. So that that works. I'm gonna undo because I kind of like using the slot feature. So let's go to slot, center to center, and I'll just click here and here. And in fact, in the drawing, I know that that dimension from uh, the center of this um, arc to the edge of the uh, body is 1.12 from the drawing. So I'm just going to put in 1.12 and then enter. And if I drag this, I can make this dimension as well, 0.78. So I can do that instead of adding dimensions later. So that's it. That's That should be correct. And of course, this is still blue. It's not constrained. And that's because it didn't, well, it didn't keep that dimension. All right, that didn't work, so <laughs> that's fine. I'll click this, hit D, and this should be 1.12. I don't know what happened there, but that's okay. Uh, for this, we know that this should be, um, well, it doesn't have an angle here, right? It just has two dimensions. So you can see on the top, the dimension from here to here is supposed to be one point, no, no, sorry, on the bottom, 1.9. And then the distance from here to here is 0.3. So way on the bottom there, there's 0.3. That tells you how far we're cutting out from the rectangle. And of course, that means the distance from here to here should be 0.46, which it says on the drawing. If I click now, that's a, a driven dimension because that's already got to be true. It's got 0.78 here, 0.3 there, 0.3 there. Everything's symmetrical. So those are those have to be 0.46. So this is a case where we're kind of veering from the drawing, right? I didn't I didn't put in 0.46 even though it's on the drawing there. Uh, I'm not being as true to the drawing, but I also think it's kind of a weird way that they've done the dimensions in here. So whatever. Um, also, uh, we've got this distance, which is 0.94. And the dimensions for this are 0.26. And, and you can see the top one is adjusting because that sim symmetry constraint is in place. This is 0.4. I think that's it. So um, the, the reason why this, like I said, this is a little easier than the others, but I think it gets more interesting when we look at how to extrude this. So uh, if we uh, think about the dimensions that are on there, there isn't a dimension sort of, well, so we know this is higher than this, but it doesn't, it isn't dimensioned that way. This has its own dimension from bottom to top and, and this has a separate one from bottom to top. So in that case, I think it makes sense instead of extruding them both and then doing one a little more than the other, it makes sense to just extrude them separately. So I know this one is supposed to be 1.5 and the other one is 0.76. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The last thing is these uh, angles, which actually, um, I think we probably could do it using chamfer again, the chamfer feature in, in the solid workspace instead of, um, instead of drawing them. But I do wanna point out, you know, I mentioned that when you create a sketch, it's better to make the reference for that sketch uh, something high up on the hierarchy here. So we've got the origin for the, con for the uh, uh, component, which is right here, right? So that, so normally I would say, well, draw it on that origin and then project in this rectangle because I'm going to have to draw some, some diagonals here and I want to be able to reference the edges of this. Well, you know, in this case, it, it makes the most sense, even though we usually prefer kind of choosing something very stable, something that's not going to change when we make changes to the model. But in this case, the feature that we're adding really does have to do with this face. It's with that we want to add some kind of chopped out areas of that face. So um, again, the reason why we try and go up, you know, and, and do it on something 
make the make the reference plane more stable and something that's not going to change is because as things change with the design we don't want to break that but in this case we know that no matter what we do the lines that we're about to draw are in reference to this plane specifically and the fact that it automatically projects them in so let me hit escape if i hover over this edge it, that little glyph there is telling me that it was projected in and it did that automatically because i chose this plane as the sketch reference plane so let me draw a line here uh, you can see I avoided that midpoint constraint that it wanted to choose because I'm not sure that that's valid. Uh, and then I am going to draw a, um, a vertical line here because I know the, these two sides are symmetrical. So in this case, uh, instead of a, you know, a dimension and a dimension, we have an, or like, you know, a distance and a distance or a length and a length, we have an angle and point, it looks like 0.44 from here to here. So yeah, I'm not a math person, but I can tell you this is, should be obvious by now, maybe. But uh, whenever we have one of these angles like this, we need, we need two things. We either need the distance from there to there and the distance from there to there, or we need one distance and an angle. So that's how we did it this time versus the other angle that we saw over here where we had two different um, distances instead of an angle. Um, last thing I'm gonna do is just create mirror, choose that sketch curve and mirror it across the middle and then finish sketch, and um, that should do it. I'm gonna just click these two with shift, extrude, and make sure it's going the right direction and choose all as the distance. When I hit okay, I think I've done it. So that's it, uh, hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you on the next one.